Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes. Let's take a look at how to play that old wallpaper. This game is put out by AEG and accommodates two to five players. It takes roughly 15 to 30 minutes to play and the recommended age is 10 plus. In that old wallpaper, we're gonna be drafting columns of wallpaper cards and trying to piece them together in order to make patterns. Along the way, we're gonna be trying to also collect mementos. Over three rounds, the player that scores the highest will win the game. So let's look at setup. That old old wallpaper can accommodate up to five players. For this example, let's go ahead and set up a four player game. We'll go ahead and return the extra player components to the box. Each player is going to have their own deck of cards and these are gonna be numbered one through 10. Go ahead and give these a good shuffle. This is gonna make up our draw pile for the game. To get started, each player is going to draw a hand of five cards. Each player will also have a perfect recall token and this is gonna match their player color. We're gonna go ahead and put these in a line. You can either do it by age from youngest to oldest, or you can just randomize their order. These are going to help us break ties, and I'll explain that in further detail in just a moment. Next, we're going to shuffle our wallpaper cards and go ahead and place them in the center of the play area. Once our wallpaper cards have been shuffled, we're going to go ahead and put as many columns out as there are players. So for our scenario, we have a four player game, so we're going to do four columns of wallpapers. Now, while setting up your wallpaper, paper columns, you may encounter an icon that looks like this, and you can see it is a red circle in the center of the card. If a card with this symbol is drawn, we're going to immediately draw another card and place it face up in the same column, just like this. Now we can continue setting up our four columns since we have four players. The column closest to the draw pile is our low end, and the column furthest from the draw pile is the high end. We're also gonna set out the hazy memory cards. These are double-sided and are treated like a wild card during the game. And we'll go over how to acquire these in just a moment. The last thing we're gonna set up is our round deck. We have round one, round two, and final round. And you can just go ahead and place these in view of all players. Now, before we get into how we create patterns with our wallpaper, let's go ahead and see how a turn would work. Using our hand of five cards and knowing that the column closest to the deck is lowest and the column furthest away is highest, I can look at my hand of cards and determine what column I would like to try to get. So let's say that I want to get this lowest column here that has two cards. In order to do that, my best bet is to play a one. As soon as all other players have selected their card, we'll all turn them over at the same time. Now, based on what numbers we've turned over, we will get to take these cards into our wallpaper display. I have one. Green has taken the second column, red the third column, and blue the final column. Now that we understand how we're going to draft cards into our display for our wallpaper, let's go ahead and look at some different scenarios we have for placing these in order to score. So these are the two I drafted in the first round. So I can see right away that I am able to create a matching shape here. Now later on, if I were to secure a card like this, this, I could make an additional match here. Now within the game, we may see cards that look like this. These have wild spaces. Now, wilds cannot be joined together to create a shape, but I can place a wild like this to finish these shapes. And as you acquire cards, you're simply gonna continue creating shapes to help you score. So let's quickly look at how these score because you really need to know that so you know how to build out your display. So this game has a really unique scoring element because after our three rounds and our wallpaper display is complete, we're going to go through and we're going to count up all of our large shapes. So we can see here we have a large green uh, and a large red and a large blue and we're going to count these all up and then we're going to go back and we're going to count all of our small shapes. So this one would count here because it's attached to a wild. So I would have one of those and it looks like I've got one red here and I've got a small blue here and we're going to add those all up 
up on this left side of the score sheet. Then in order to actually award us points, we're going to look at the lowest scoring shape that we had in that color. So for instance, let's say that I had three of these large green shapes, but only one of these small shapes, then I would do one times two, which would give me two points. And I would follow this same scoring method for the others, looking at my lowest in each color between the two shapes and multiplying it by two to get my score for that color. In addition to this, we're also going to look at these shapes located in the middle of the cards. Now in that old wallpaper, there's actually four different shapes and we can see those depicted here. And depending on how many you've collected will depend on what your score is. So I have a square and a diamond. So I have two out of the four shapes, which is going to give me three points. If I had collected all four shapes, I would get 10 points. Then we're also going to look at these red ovals. Now, the player that has the most is going to get negative two, and the player that has the least will get two bonus points. And this last option here is referring to our recall line, which we're going to talk about how that comes into play. But basically, the player that is in the front of of the recall line is going to get two victory points. And that is how scoring works in that old wallpaper. So now that we understand how we draft cards and how they score, let's go back to that recall line and look at how that works in gameplay. So we've successfully played through our very first turn and everyone should have a face up discarded pile now from that first card that we played to draft our first wallpaper cards. And everyone should also have four cards in hand. So before we start, the next drafting phase, we're all going to draw an additional card because before we start, we should all have five cards in hand. So once everyone's ready, we'll go ahead and turn over our four wallpaper columns. And just like before, we're going to pick a number that's hopefully going to help us acquire the column that we want. Remembering that the column closest to the deck will be the lowest and the one furthest away is the highest. And we also have our recall line and we have the front of the line by the highest and the back of the recall line closest to the deck. So let's say for this scenario, I'd like to get one of these two cards. So I'm going to play my nine. Once everyone selected their card, we'll flip them all up at the same time. We can see here that we've assigned everyone's number. So green is going to get this one. Blue is going to get this wallpaper and their cards can be discarded as normal. But we can see that the yellow player and the red player have both played a number nine. So that is going to tie up these two wallpaper selections. In order to determine who breaks this tie, we're going to look at that player recall line. And the way that we're going to determine who gets this is who is closest to the front of the line. So we can see from our lineup here that the red player is ahead of the yellow player. So the red player is going to get to select which wallpaper they would like. So let's discard their nine and assume assume that they're going to take this card that has two wilds. Now, the player that is left, you would think maybe would get this column, but that's not how it works in that old wallpaper. This player will discard their nine and they're going to get one of these hazy memory cards. And these are going to be just held in their area until the end of the game when they will be able to utilize these playing either side in order to help them optimize their points. Since the red player was the player furthest up who won this tiebreaker, their recall token will then get put in the back of the line. When we set up our columns for next round, we will simply leave this wallpaper in its column and add one underneath, which also has a red icon. So we're gonna put one more down below it. And of course, add our fourth column as normal. Each player will then draw to have five cards and we're ready for our next turn. Now the round is gonna conclude when we need to draw in order to have five cards in hand, but have no draw pile left. At this point, we can go ahead and discard all of our cards and shuffle to create a new deck for round two. We can then go ahead and move the round one card to the bottom and work our way through round two. Play will continue just like this until we have completed our final round. At that point, it will be time to do scoring and find out who created the best wallpaper display. And that's how you play that old wallpaper. Life is a winding road, no telling where it goes. 